So today, guys, I have 50 new tips and tricks for Valheim, and I think some of them are actually really cool, and hopefully you guys won't know them. Hopefully, if you watch this to the end, there'll be at least like 10 tips you didn't know, but let me know down in the comments if there's any in particular that you really like or didn't know, or indeed if there's any of your own that you think could be useful to the community. So let's get started. You can place down a sign, and when entering the text, do a load of spaces after it to get a floating text effect. This can be used on your portals or on your storage systems or wherever else you would like to use it, and it's a pretty cool looking effect. If you're in a plains biome and a Deathskito sees you, outrunning them is nearly impossible. It's much better to let them come and attack you and shoot them with a bow. Even with a low level bow and not great arrows, you can kill them because they are pretty weak to the bow attack. So there is a Deathskito just over here. So what we're going to do is uh, pretend that he's like seen us or that he is going to see us in a second. And here we go. So now we get our bow ready as he flies in. And boom, he is going to die. If you try to outrun them, chances are they're going to get hit on you. And within one or maybe two hits, they are going to kill you, especially when you're new to the plane's biome. So be sure to just have your boat at the ready like that and take a shot at them. It really is your best option. When you're out exploring, you should always have materials on you to make a campfire as you can then get your rested buff, which is a really OP buff to have in the game. Now, if you're in a swamp biome, you can still get this rested buff. You just need to find a tree where once you stand underneath it, as you see here, my wet is going down now. So that means I am technically sheltered by this tree. So at this point, what you can do is go ahead and place down your campfire under here. And if we can get it just close enough to the tree, there we go. So right now that is under the tree and sheltered. And if we can get some shelter next to it as well, if we get in nice and close here, there we go, we're starting to dry off. We can just sit down here now and wait and we will get our rested buff. Doing this in a swamp biome can be particularly useful when you're fighting bone mass, as he is obviously quite a difficult boss to beat, and having the rested buff is really going to help you out. I want to say a quick thank you to today's video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a free to download mobile game, and it is insane how good the graphics are. I was genuinely blown away when I started playing this recently. And you couple that with the complexity of the game, the different bosses and champions available, the amount of things to do, the challenges, the missions, it's no wonder 10 million people are playing this game. So I want to start by talking about the two champions I chose to start my raid adventure off with. First up is Sniper here, this rocking chick with absolutely sick stats to start off the game with. And we have this dude right here, Garlic, which he's just like Shrek on steroids, an absolute monster. So Raid has just hit their two year anniversary. And what that means, there are a ton of anniversary events and tournaments going on right now, which means if you go quickly, you might be able to get some of these awesome events and things for the extra gifts and rewards that they are currently doing and raid also just released the first batch of the new shadowkin faction this is a brand new asian inspired faction and the new doom tower rotation which is this giant tower with tons of new hidden challenges and bosses if you want a huge head start in your raid adventure all you have to do is hit the link in my description or scan the qr code and you'll get your free epic champion jotun who by the way is amazing for the doom tower you'll also get 100k silver 50 gems and the three ancient shards so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game so if you act in the next 30 days all of this treasure will be waiting for you here in game you can just tap that to get to your inbox and you'll have all of this stuff and it's just that easy guys click the link in the description get your awesome raid rewards today and start your very own raid adventure whilst in a swamp you can also place down a fire inside a crypt as you see here and once again we are sheltered we are drying off and we are able to get the rested buff from in here as well if you're crafting something and you change your mind simply Simply click again along the crafting progress bar and it will cancel the craft. Whenever building a portal in an area you intend to return to, make sure to protect the portal as mobs can come and destroy it, leaving you stranded and unable to return back to this portal. Protection can be done reasonably easy as you see here by using some spike balls and some sort of gate or door to get in and out. It's also a potential idea to use some trees in order to protect it even better, but just some sort of protection is definitely needed to make sure you don't get that portal destroyed. When you see structures like this in a black forest, you can smash open the barrels outside to get all kinds of useful loot. If you want, you can also smash up the stool and it will give you a bit of the fine wood before you might otherwise be able to get it in the game. If you're lucky enough to find one of these in your world, don't destroy it. This is a maypole and if you build your base near it, it will actually give you one extra comfort point. But if you were to destroy it, then uh, you won't get anything for it and it's also not an item you can currently craft in the game. You can overlap log and stone piles when you're placing them down in in order to save space and also just give you different types of aesthetic for when you are building. So when you find a copper deposit, there are a couple of things to say. First of all, when you think you've mined all the copper on the uh, surface, you haven't. Make sure
sure you dig down as you can see here we can go way way down and there's still copper all the way down here you'll get two sometimes three times more copper underneath than you will get on the surface the other thing to say is you can use these copper deposits to dig into them and make underground bases or just little hidey holes or whatever you want to do but basically you can almost like tunnel underneath them and the copper will stay up on top so as long as i'm mining underneath this copper area right here all of this can be a big cavity underneath where i can make a little underground base when you find a grade or spawner be sure to mark it and then later on as soon as you can in the game make a grade wolf farm these are super simple to make and will give you infinite stone wood grade wolf eyes resin and ancient seeds there is a full video tutorial on my channel if you want to see how this is done it's a good idea to have two portals at your home when you're first starting out or you can get a proper portal room set up and what you want to do is have one that you can keep renaming and i've got a list here of the different names to remind myself what they are and basically if i rename this to say bf from swamp uh, it'll still say it's connected but what you want to do is make sure you wait a good few seconds before going through otherwise it will take you to the swamp one not the bf one and you'll be stranded there so just give it a good few seconds but then you can go through and use it the second portal you can title it something like home and have it unconnected at all times apart from when you go off exploring and then you can go off exploring take the materials with you to make a new portal when you're out and about and then you can teleport home if you need to get back instantly which is very very useful before you have enough materials to make both a smelter and a charcoal kiln you can do this with just five certain core you place your charcoal kiln down and turn as much wood as you need into coal then simply destroy it and at this point you can pick up the five certain core and the other materials of course and then you'll be able to use that to make yourself a smelter so you can keep alternating between them as and when you need until you have the 10 certain core that you need to make both having workbenches around inside your builds can sometimes look a bit messy after a while so one thing you can do is hide the workbench under the floor just like this then go ahead and place floor on top and cover it all in so it'll be completely hidden but it'll still be there meaning you can still build and use it in the way that you would for building projects but not of course for things like repairing tools or making things things when out and about you can use a tree and just a couple of roof pieces like this to place down a workbench and use it very quickly to repair things or make things rather than having to get any sort of elaborate setup so this right here is the minimum that you need and you can do this when out and about to speed things up when upgrading your weapons you should be selective about what you upgrade and make sure you're upgrading things in an order that makes sense it's tempting to think okay well i'm going to upgrade like all of my iron stuff at once and then go through and do it again but it's much better to upgrade things in the order you need them specifically i would say it's always best to upgrade your shield first as it is in my opinion the best thing you can have in the game but then it depends what next because if you need to get loads of trees chopped down for loads of wood obviously you're going to go through your axe if you need to do a lot of mining you're going to do your pickaxe if you're about to fight a mob or a boss then obviously uh, upgrading like your weapons and stuff is a better idea so be smart in the way that you upgrade and also know that sometimes a fully upgraded uh, item at one level is actually better than an item at the next level so for example a fully upgraded bronze mace is better than the level one iron mace in most areas so do be careful about this research the stats online because materials in this game can be difficult to get and you want to be efficient with all of the materials that you do get whenever you're starting a build make sure that anything you place down on the floor is blue when you look at it whilst holding a hammer blue means that it is a solid foundation block and this means it will allow you to build much higher whilst we're talking about building if you want to hide the poles here you can simply place a beam over the top like this place this on top again and you can hide them like this and it will just look like normal wooden poles while it's still giving you the stability of the iron poles if you want to place a campfire on a piece of wooden floor obviously you're not able to do so however there are ways that you can do this the first is to get a situation like you see here now at this point what i can do is go ahead and place the campfire just there like that there we go very good so at this point we do now have a campfire sat perfectly on top of a wooden floor what i can do here now is go ahead and just level the ground to get rid of the dirt that was on there and there we go it's sat nicely on top of a wooden floor just like that now getting to that stage can sometimes be difficult you're going to need to use the hoe to do a bit of raising and leveling and maybe even a bit of mining away with your pickaxe but if it's the effect you're going for it does look rather nice another thing you can do is get rid of the wooden floor place down the campfire on the ground and then place the wooden floor on top of it now this normally ends up in my experience with something a bit like this and i think i prefer this one over here however it's just another option and i thought i'd include it in the video just in case this helps somebody out for whatever specific need they might have you can easily stack chests on top of each other by placing down one chest then getting a small floor piece like this and snapping it to the side here you can use shift to make sure it's at the right height and that sort of thing 
to put it about there. Then I'll go ahead and get myself another chest like this. Zoom in, make sure it's like right on top. There we go. And I can use my hammer to take away that piece of wood there at this point. And we have chests stacked on top of each other. And you can do this up even higher if you want to. Sometimes when building a dock or something like this, it can be hard to get your piece to snap underneath to form the support. So what you can do is actually get close to it, then press X to sit down. If we just wait a second here, the camera is going to come down underneath. There we go. And now we can see the underside of this a lot easier. And we can snap things on to the underside. Now, obviously, the tide came in there, which is why it made me stand back up. But you guys get the idea. If you want to build high, try building near trees because they do provide fantastic support. If I place down this right here, you'll see this is now a blue piece. And it's only just touching that tree. So it actually counts as a foundational piece, which is very useful if you are trying to go high. Another thing you can do is place stone right next to a tree and again that will hold it up so let's uh, just jump down here there we go um so this can be quite useful for when you're building high up as well to have like a, a strong support but also another thing you can do with this is if we go here stand down here we can place a uh, campfire high up right because we can place campfires on top of stone then you can actually get rid of the stone and the campfire will stay obviously uh, that was supporting my wooden bit there so that didn't stay but then you can go ahead and place wood underneath so not only can you have a campfire up in the air you can have a campfire on top of a wooden floor up in the air if you really want to you can hide iron gates inside of stone walls as you're building and if we build this all the way up this is going to be completely hidden what this will do though is actually make this incredibly strong it actually reinforces it so if you want to go really tall from the ground up this is one way of thinking about doing that if you take a boat ride to somewhere that is just absolutely miles away from your base and you don't want to have to sail it all the way back but you'd rather go through a portal what you can do is place down a workbench then use your hammer to repair the boat the reason we do this is to make sure it's at full health with no damage because then you can use an axe to get on the boat and just kind of swing away at it and damage it until the boat breaks now the reason we do it this way is because when the boat is fully repaired and it breaks you get all of your items back including anything that was in the storage of that boat if it is not fully repaired though then you can lose items and things before you do it so i recommend that you don't do that but then you'll get all of your stuff and be able to take it back through the portal obviously providing nothing in the boat storage was anything that can't be taken through a portal it's a good idea not to park your boat too near to rocks as when the waves come in the boat will crash against the rocks and take damage and it could even break through this if you leave it for too long if you plan on taking a cart with you on a boat for that extra storage it might be an idea to not put the cart on until you've got to wherever you're going and also don't let it fall off and die like this uh, but when a cart is on a boat it can mean that it can cause the boat damage so it's a better idea to get your boat to wherever you want to go and then make the cart once you're there to come back with that way it only has to do one trip of damage and you're not going to have your boat die on you in the middle of the ocean you can right click just about anything in your inventory to equip it and to use it and it'll also queue things if you were to right click several pieces of armor at once for example this also works inside inventory spaces like chests so you can actually just right click rather than taking it out and then eating it in order to for example eat the bread in this case and again you can use that with armor and weapons tools all that sort of stuff to queue them up or just to use them without having to have them on your hotbar if you're scaling a very steep mountain and you start to run out of stamina you can simply left click whilst holding a pickaxe to make a little divot like this and then you can stand here here, wait for your health to regen or your stamina to regen i should say and then continue the process until you're at the top of course don't be a nub like me make sure you got some way of preventing freezing if you are in a mountain when placing floor to try and make a bit of a bridge out like this it can be difficult and a bit finicky to get to the exact point like that to build outwards and particularly if you're over a big drop then you could die if you get it wrong and fall off so an easier way is to just place down some of these beams here next to the uh, bridge like this and then you can just snap them on uh, to here and the other thing you can do is uh, keep doing Doing this the whole way along like this and make a bit of a line and then keep snapping them on and this will just be a lot easier and a better way and faster way of snapping these on to make your bridges when out exploring it is a very good idea to put your vegetation on low right now my vegetation is on high and if we go into our settings go to graphics put the vegetation down to low you'll see the difference this makes we can instantly see how much more stuff is available this is particularly useful for finding things like stones mushrooms raspberries branches dandelions pretty much anything you find on the floor you will find a lot more stuff if you put your vegetation down to low a great way to protect your base is to build up a big stone wall and this will enable you to be completely safe behind it as mobs are not able to break this down now uh, you might say does this work for all mobs well yes it does pretty much even the trolls and things like that 
However, it will not work for something like a drake, which of course could fly over, but it covers just about everything else. Of course, when you do this, if you're making a tower at this height, for example, uh, rather than digging up or building up, I should say, from the ground each time with your hoe and using loads of stone, simply look up to the top there and look just below and you can bring out the wall this way. In doing this, you only use four stone each time, whereas if you do it from the bottom all the way up, you'll use a lot more. It's four per each time you build up by one. So every time we do this, we're using four, whereas the other method is four every time we just look here and click. Another option for extra security and a way of getting some of this stone in the first place is to build a moat around your base by simply just digging down a little bit. And again, you can dig down as much or as little as you like and then just keep digging all the way around until you have yourself a little bit of a moat. Or if you're inland like I am right here, then obviously it'll be more of a ditch. But it does mean that when mobs come to your base, they get to here, they're going to be either down here in water, which encumbers them, or at least they're going to be an even bigger height that they're unable to get over the top of. The reason I say that is depending on how high you make this wall. If, for example, we have a wall that's like a little bit higher than this, but maybe uh, not as high as that, and we have like a building that's too close here, when trolls come by with their hammers and they start hitting, sometimes the hammer will come over the wall and damage buildings nearby. So either don't build the buildings too close to the wall, or you can help by having a little ditch. And when the trolls are down in the ditch, they'll now no longer be get over the wall with their hammers, or even if they're throwing the rocks as well, they won't be able to get over either. You can also use the method of raising ground. If you're running around trying to escape mobs and you're struggling, you can quickly build up like this. And again, they won't be able to get you. And if you build all the way up to the top like this, even a troll right now, if it was right next to me, would not be able to get me. Again, the only thing that this wouldn't work on is something like a Drake or a Death Skeeto, because of course they can fly. But early game, sometimes you might be looking for a quick way of escaping. So you can dig up like this, regen your stamina, maybe use your bow if you have it on you to shoot any mobs that are nearby, particularly, for example, if you're being raided during one of those events. Uh, and then obviously you can just dig back down when you're ready to do so. This raise ground method also works when you're over water to raise the ground by just using four stone each time. We just look over the edge a little bit and we go off like this. So what you can do with this is actually make yourself a bit of a land bridge and you could get this to go in between islands if you wanted to. If you make it all the way up to as high as it will go, it'll enable you to make it a bit flatter as you go. Uh, however, you can also, of course, use the pickaxe and the hoe and stuff like that. And eventually you can make a land bridge from one island to the next which might be useful in certain circumstances. If you do make a moat, you can make a little drawbridge by placing down doors, and when all the doors are open, it will form a bit of a gap, but when they're all shut, you'll be able to walk over it and even drag a car over it. So if we go ahead and close all these, uh, a car, I should say, not a car. <laughs> and then we can just run over here like this, there we go, we brought our hoe over. So kind of a useful little thing there uh, if you do want to have a bit of a drawbridge effect. It's a good idea to make a certling farm as soon as you find a certling spawner. The reason being, they are incredibly easy to make and will save you a ton of wood because you'll get the coal rather than having to turn wood into coal in the charcoal kiln. And you also get tons of these things, the certling cores. And they're useful for obviously making portals and things like smelters and that type of thing. Also, you'll get certling trophies, which are an excellent thing to use as a permanent light source in your base by placing them on onto an item stand. Whenever you explore a new biome, you should be very careful and explore it very slowly. If you go ahead and see a mob before they see you and you get the first shot off at them with your bow, you'll do more damage because you'll catch them by surprise and often you'll be able to one hit those mobs. It will of course alert them to your presence afterwards, but as you can see here, you're able to get a good few shots in on them, including staggering them a couple of times. And in most cases, you can probably kill them if you have good stamina just before they get to you. Although I did miss a shot there, which doesn't help. But you can, of course, switch to your melee weapon before they get this close and kill them that way. But running in too fast into biomes was a big mistake that I made early on in the game. And so it is definitely a useful tip to make sure you go slowly, take care of any mobs you see first, or even just avoid them altogether. I could see mobs in the distance there and go, you know what, I'm going to head this way and not have to deal with them right now. You can really easily make scarecrows in this game with very minimal resources to add to the aesthetic of your farms. Just be careful not to plant any crops directly underneath them, as crops do need direct sunlight to grow. And also, if you plant crops too near them, then they'll also not be able to grow, as they do need a bit of space to grow. Also, if you really want to go for it, you could even easily make a windmill like you see here. And I'm sure you guys could do a much better one than this, <laughs> but it's just an idea to improve your farm's aesthetics a little bit. Talking of farming, as you see here, you can get crops pretty close together. Uh, now, a good like rule of thumb for this 
is if you go ahead and get a little one by one wooden floor panel, if you place that down next to a crop, essentially you can place a crop on each of the corners, right? And then it will not be in the way of each other. Uh, so that is like a good little guide there as to how you can plant down your carrots, turnips, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and that's about how far apart you need them. Now, I'm not suggesting you do this for every individual one, but it just gives you a rough idea and then you'll know exactly how close you can plant them when you're doing a farm to make the most of the space you have available. And incidentally, if you're doing a tree farm, you can use the same principle, but you need to have the two by two wooden floor. Um, so essentially, when we place this down at each of the four corners, that is how far apart you can place your tree saplings in order for them to grow healthily. You can easily do a secret room in Valheim using banners as you can walk straight through these like this into a secret room. Now, obviously, don't do every banner in your base that leads to a secret room. But if you have some that do and some that don't, then eventually people, if they try them, will walk into walls for the most part. But you can just hide them here or even just use it as a bit of a different type of door. Similarly, you can do the same thing with rugs where you can have a secret like hidey hole down in the floor here. And of course, uh, we could have like built underneath here. Like this is just the foundation of my building. But again, you can have like a little secret basement room under here that you could build and do things with if you so wish and then just jump out when you want to escape. If you see a lot of drake sporting around a dragon egg, it can be an idea to pick up the dragon egg and then just chuck it back down on the floor. And uh, what that'll do is stop more from spawning once you've killed whatever ones are in the area. Do remember to mark your dragon egg locations on the map guys as they will respawn in game it does take a long time but it will happen and it is useful to do because obviously they are quite a rare resource as another quick little tip about dragon eggs one thing you can do if you're struggling to get them down because of their weight and stuff like that is uh, you can take them to like the edge of a mountain and then chuck them over and they'll kind of roll all the way down to the bottom of the mountain so if you have like a bit of a base set up at a ledge i have to pick this one up to hit that you can kind of roll them down and this will enable you to get them a little bit further when you die in valheim the first thing you should always do is go onto the map and mark the location with some sort of marker nearby because uh, if you die again on the way to it which can happen because obviously you don't have your best gear and stuff often uh, then when that happens this will disappear on the map and you won't be able to see where you died you can lose your grave the other thing to say is in the top right of my screen right now you can see i've got the no skill drain bonus this gives me 10 minutes where I, if i die again i won't lose any skill so that is the way to do it you want to make the most of that and very quickly try and get back to your grave now when you get to a grave and you open it, you'll see you get 50 seconds of corpse run again up there in the top right of the screen next to the no skill drain you can see the corpse run now what that means is for that 50 seconds your stamina will decrease by 75 percent less than it normally would you can see as I'm, I'm sprinting around here my stamina bar is barely going down now if you combine that with your Ikther ability which you want to have active if possible when going back for your grave then right now I can sprint around uh, and have like that 50 seconds where I don't even lose any stamina as you can see here I'm just sprinting around my stamina is being maintain that's going to really help you to get away from enemies or get to your next grave point and that sort of thing because what you might want to do is if i die like halfway up a mountain and i can't get back to it i can chain the corpse run effects because i can just get from one grave to the next and as soon as i open that i get the next corpse run in order to get the corpse run you must have at least one item in your inventory so be sure to pick something up and then run up and uh, when you die it will leave the grave and you'll get that corpse run effect which you can chain as i say and you combine that with the ike that means you can be able to run around in any biome stamina free for several minutes get all your stuff back and you're good to go the other thing to say of course is make sure when you get to your grave uh, the fastest way to escape if it's being camped by mobs is to have fewer items in your inventory than are in the grave so that when you uh, go to the grave you can pick up all of the stuff there very quickly by just pressing E. So you'll run up to the grave, you'll press E, and everything will just go straight into your inventory. Whereas if your inventory is full, it will open up a screen like this, and you have to pick and choose what to take. This can really slow you down and lead you to die again, so it's better to have less on you if possible. While it's told... <clears throat> While it's holding certain core, you can look at the fire and press the number of your inventory to use it to get yourself a bit of a fireworks display. So there you have it guys, 50 new tips and tricks in Valheim. I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching, and of course, here come the dad jokes. What do you call it when a snowman throws a tantrum? A meltdown. What does a bee use to brush its hair? A honeycomb. What kind of shoes do ninjas wear? Sneakers. How does a penguin build its house? It glues it together. I used to hate facial hair, but then it grew on me. I know some people pick their nose, but I was actually just born with mine. I used to play piano by ear. Now I use my hands.